let's touch base with on the world. So we've talked about the flesh, um, our own flesh, that, that part of us that is still needing to be sanctified um, by the Holy Spirit within us. We've talked about how that leads us astray uh, without any in, other influences. Mm -hmm. um, we've talked about the devil and demons and how they're seeking to lead us astray to our destruction, uh, to um, hinder the work of the Lord, all those sorts of things. And now we want to talk about the world. The world is an interesting phrase. We generally associate that with culture. Uh, I've given you a couple of definitions of culture on your sheets here. Let me just point those out because I think they're really, it's an important thing to acknowledge. The culture are the customary beliefs, social forms, and material traits of a racial, religious, or social group. Also, it is the characteristic features of everyday existence, such as diversions or a way of life shared by people in a place or time. And so when we are living today, we live in East Tennessee and we live in Knoxville, we live in this culture and in this community. 10, 15, 20 years ago and, and farther back, we had a unique, distinct culture here. People came to East Tennessee because life was slower, it felt more uh, honest, uh, the people were, it was a simpler way of life, all of those things that are now gone because we are a culture that is, has been continuously being influenced by the devil uh, by the fleshly desires of people. And so we now have a culture of sin and death. Um, years ago, uh, I called, we were having some kind of a, a special emphasis here, and I called some pastors to invite them to come and to bring their, their congregants. And I engaged with a gentleman who was uh, daily down on Cherry Street praying about the abortion clinic. Mm -hmm. And he said, Preacher, I know what you're doing is good and is right, and you pre press on. He said, but we have a culture of death, and we must break the cycle of death in our culture so that people can see the life that Christ gives. He was talking about what was taking place at the abortion clinic, mm -hmm. and no doubt, even more so today, mm -hmm. even more so. So culture is where we live and who we live with. It is our entertainment. It is our friends, our families. It's how we do our life, and you need to know that it is all influenced by the devil. He's the God of the world. He's the God of the age. Um, we, I've pulled up here on the scriptures, Ephesians six twelve. our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, the powers against the world forces of this darkness, against the spiritual forces of wickedness in the heavenly places. This is the tentacles of Satan into the daily life of people. That's how I like to think about culture in our world. So how is our world an enemy of the believer seeking to pursue Christ? Yeah. Okay. Um, well, I go a little bit further with the, uh, with the culture in that I see it as, as massive layers. The first culture you run into as an individual is the culture in your own home, mm -hmm. the family you're born into, and then the community around you, and then the state maybe, a region of the country, and then the country, and then the continent, and so forth, and, uh, and the world. So there's different levels of culture. And so if you look at a, a, a portion of time, uh, history, uh, different times in history, the world culture was a lot, was a lot different. You know, every hundred years or so, it, the whole world changes into a different mindset. So we are under these layers, if you will, each individual is under these layers of, of so-called culture. And so that is all satan's work he's the the god of this world and his his goal is to destroy us uh, especially if we're pursuing god and so with these layers and layers it's hard for a person to even have a sane thought sometimes because oh. of the huge uh, piles of of culture if you will that influences us in every way. Then every generation, and most homes today have at least two generations in, under their same roof, and maybe more. And so w even within your own household, you're going to have different levels of culture. Mm -hmm. so, and it's all against us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we need, to we need to rightly see that the sinful culture where we live is against us. Mm -hmm. This is not something that's helping us. No. Uh, we, we truly have a sworn enemy here. Uh, in the culture. And now um, the enemy identifies itself as such, right? I mean, they, the, where we live, the entertainment, the news cycle, all of the things are plainly 
boldly and unashamedly against a biblically minded people. Oh, no question about it. Uh, in fact, some of the leaders of our country have come out with, in recent years and said that we need to understand that our culture has evolved mm -hmm. and we need to allow our biblical concepts to be fit in to fit into mm -hmm. the evolving culture but because what was right maybe in the year 1900 is now maybe no longer right or what was wrong then mm -hmm. may not be wrong now right and it's trying to justify mm -hmm. um, the degrading of the culture around us um, we see, uh, for instance, I, I mentioned a moment ago, two or three generations ago, uh, abortion was, was uh, not even talked about. Um, if, it, if it was talked about at all, it was somebody in secret saying, well, I traveled so-and-so to get an abortion by some doctor somewhere. You know, uh, If you go back another generation beyond that, you couldn't probably you, you couldn't mm -hmm. even find anybody that even mm -hmm. talked about it at all. Right. The same thing's true about uh, homosexuality. Mm -hmm. The same thing's true about transgenderism. But one, when one thing starts mm -hmm. and you start accepting it and the culture starts accepting it, then it, it progresses right. to another right. and another and another until finally the culture is destroyed. It destroys itself. Mm -hmm. And that's happened over and over throughout right. history. If you yeah. look, uh, the, the Russian culture did the same thing. Uh, Roman culture did the same thing, uh, German culture did the same thing, and American culture is doing the same thing yeah. right now. Right, yeah. Well, you take something like Disney, uh, what Disney was 50 oh, years wow. ago, um, was safe, you know, uh, oh yeah, well, they can watch a Disney movie or we can go to Disneyland, we can mm -hmm. go to Disney World, we can go to the Disney store and buy what we want to buy, yeah. and now... There are a lot of Christians who want to try to ride the fence. Well, some of it's okay and some of it's not, except that in the recent months, we can just look back a few months and we can see that it is plainly, boldly, and unashamedly saying, no, we don't believe in the family. No. We, we believe in equal opportunity for you can love who you want to love and live who you want to live with and all that sort of stuff. It, <clears throat> it literally is an assault. Now, the reason it's an assault you adults in here are probably not going to be influenced by Disney. If, you know, if they come out and say, well, we're going to do a, uh, a new thing and there's going to be two dads or two moms or there's going to be three people that are living as parents or whatever, most of you are going to say, ah, it's junk, I'm not going to watch it, and you're going to turn it off. Your grandkids are going to come over and say, oh, I want to watch Disney. No, we're not watching Disney in this house. You know, we watch HGTV or nothing, you know, or whatever it might be. And you say, can't do that anymore, right? But Disney is a sleeper because now they don't care about you. They care about your children, your grandchildren, your great-grandchildren, and what is being taught is now being reinforced in school. It's now being reinforced in other movies and other publishing houses and other all this sort of stuff. And so it's a full-on assault. The culture is seeking to destroy just like the father of that culture, the God of this world, seeks mm -hmm. to destroy. And it, is, it starts spiritual. Mm -hmm. It starts attacking at biblical truth. And so it's a difficult thing for, for families, specifically young families today, to find that place. Kids are going to school. Well, they, all the kids are seeing this movie or that movie. Well, we don't do that in our house. Mm. Well, now we're at war at home. Yeah. <laughs> we're at war at home, right? You yeah. said it starts in the home. One of you did, yeah. and it really does. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very difficult situation right now because the enemy um, knows that he has inroads into the society in which we live, and he's going to continue his assault. Um, there's only one defense for it, and that's the scriptures and, and the Christian life. We have to understand something that I don't think we, under, that we really understand, and that is the scripture says that we are not citizens of this world. Mm -hmm. yeah. Our citizenship is in heaven. Amen. Mm -hmm. That we're pilgrims, we're strangers uh, going through uh, until we get to our eternal home. Mm -hmm. uh, I've traveled quite a lot in the last several years. Uh, probably been in Guatemala 50 or 60 times. Uh, I've never been a Guatemalan citizen. I was not affected by the Guatemalan culture all that much because every time I went there, even if they, uh, if they were killing each other, if there was a, a war going on, whatever was happening, I knew 
I'm only going to be here for seven days or 10 days or 14 days or whatever it was, and then I'm going home because I'm an American mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm not a Guatemalan. Mm -hmm. uh, same thing happened uh, in going in the South Pacific or in Australia or in, in uh, uh, places in Africa. I realized that's their culture, that's what they do, but it's not what I do. Well, we have to understand the same thing as far as this whole world is concerned, that we're not citizens of this world. That's what they do. Yeah. That's what it does. Yeah. But I have to do something different. Mm -hmm. I've been born again. I'm a stranger here. I'm just passing through. Mm -hmm. And uh, this world is not my home. Right. Yeah. And it's hard to understand sometimes because you say, well, it is my home. I live in Knoxville, Tennessee, and I live in Knox County. I live in Tennessee. I live in the United States of America. I'm a citizen. Yes, we are in, in one sense of the word, but our citizenship, our real citizenship is in heaven mm -hmm. when we're born again. Yeah, it's a good word. Glenn. Yeah, when I look at the, the current culture, I think about back to the Garden of Eden when Adam and Eve were tempted mm -hmm. and that they were, they were seeking to uh, be like God. And the culture today is really absent God. It's man-centered, mm -hmm. what man wants to do. And lo and behold, all of the people in these leadership positions, they're looking for all the, quote, nice people around them, what they call nice people. But that doesn't fit the definition of a Christian, see. And so what they're looking for is a way to have a human-centered world, not mm -hmm. a God-centered world. Yeah. And it's a fulfillment yeah. of what started in the Garden of Eden. It is, yeah. So we, we, in a fancy term, call that secular humanism. Yeah. Um, and that's, that is, has overtaken all of what we would then call civilized culture, mm -hmm. um, the first world, uh, of, you know, when, when we begin thinking about that. So the culture is your enemy, and the devil is your enemy, and all of the demons, and we have within us our own flesh, the, those desires that are ungodly, uh, that still arise from time to time in an unpredictable fashion. It's a fallacy for us to believe that our flesh arises, and it's only a problem when we're young. Uh, that's what we tend to think. We tend to think all oh, those fleshly passions and desires, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, that's young people problems. That is a lie that entices you in to go to sleep and to not be on your guard because uh, the, the, those same things, the root of those still exist all the way up until death. Yeah. The desire to live on beyond, the desire to gain wealth and to accumulate all of the things of this world, to lay up treasures on earth, all of those things are still there. It's just, it's, it's a little more, we hide it better, don't we? So these are our enemies as believers, and um, we need to see them as such. Now, I don't mean you need to, to go around peeking around every corner and say, is there an enemy down, the, there, down there? But we need to be very aware that you, we, as believers in the Lord Jesus Christ, are under attack. Sometimes that attack is from within. Sometimes that attack is at home. Sometimes it is in church. And sometimes it is out in our culture and our world. Um, the devil is real. He is still seeking. The, uh, Peter says it this way. Uh, be strong, be vigilant. For your adversary, Jeff called the devil the adversary. Your adversary, the devil, is walking about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may play with. That's not what he says. Devour. Mm -hmm. Devour. That's your enemy. And he will use the movie, the TV, the news, the social media. He will use your neighbor down the street. He will use a demon to influence you, to push you, force you, tempt you, draw you in. He will use anything he can to bring about the destruction of the person before they meet Christ or the destruction of the person who, after they have met Christ to interrupt and disrupt what God's plan is. I and think we have to understand that as Christians, we are his enemy. He's after us. He... He's not interested in the rest of the world so much as because he knows he can, he can control that without a whole lot of problem. Mm -hmm. But when he looks at the church, looks at the Christians, he says, "That's <clears throat> I've got to do something mm -hmm. to undermine that yeah. and to bring that down because that mm -hmm. stands in the way yeah. of me becoming what I want to be, and yeah. that is the God of this world. That's right. 
So we'll close, but I want to share this verse with you. Jesus and Peter interacting, Jesus says uh, to Peter, Peter, who, you know, what, who am I? Whatever Peter says, you're the Christ, the son of the living God. Okay, great answer. And God, Jesus says, yeah, well, your flesh didn't come up with that. <laughs> the, spirit with, the spirit led you to that truth. And he, then here's what he says. But I say you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. And he didn't stop there. Aren't we glad he didn't stop mm-hmm. there? Because here's then what he said. The gates of hell will not prevail against my church. Now, we here are God's church. Because we, the bedrock, the common bond... And the singular salvation is Jesus. That is what stands. It doesn't mean that we live forever. It doesn't mean that we're not attacked. It doesn't mean that we are not weak and that we are not also destroyed in this life. But what it does mean is that in Christ we have the hope of perfection and eternity in the presence of our Savior. We may not make it out of this fight in the world's view. But in Christ we are victorious. Because sin has no more hold on us. Death is no longer of a great concern. Because death for us in the believer is that entrance into the reward of heaven. The blessed presence of our Savior Jesus. And so you just need to be aware you're not exempt. You are not exempt from the battle. Um, But the battle, it starts in prayer. It is sustained through prayer. And it ends in prayer. Because that is where we are hearing from and sharing with the one who died for us. You can know all the scriptures, but if you don't know Jesus, it doesn't matter. And that's what Jesus said. You know, he looked at the Pharisees and he said, you know, all this stuff, their lips proclaim one thing, but their heart is far from me. And then, of course, in the book of James, James says um, that the demons shudder. They are scared of Jesus. We need to have that reverential fear of, of the Lord Jesus ourselves too.